Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. This is Dr. Rasi. Today's topic is, um, yeah, I'm gonna share my screen with you, the study guide for chapter two, uh, in which is basically um, the unit two of plant morphology that we are uh, we cover. So here we start with, um, with the study guide, which starts with basically, um, Ex, um, chapters 25, 12, 15, and 16. So chapter 25 is about the plant shoot system. So we know that plant shoot system is, uh, starts with the shoot apical meristem, produces, um, that's the leaf primordia, um, and then um, everything actually programmed there, and then a whole shoot system develops, right? So in the, what is in the shoot system? We have leaf, stem, uh, we might have flower, um, fruits, seeds, and anything above ground within the shoot system, right? So a shoot, um, the important part of the shoot is stem. It could be um, woody or herbaceous. So woody is thick, more like trees and shrubs. Herbaceous is more soft tissue, like annual plants, right? So we know that. Um, so make sure that you cover the anatomy and also two major classes that we learn, monocotyledons versus dicotyledons in angiosperms, uh, and then how their anatomy uh, changes, and also stem types, monocot versus dicot versus um, like uh, gymnosperms, um, how their stem anatomy is different than each other. Um, then um, the second part is there is the leaf. The whole um, the second part of the chapter 25 is about the leaf starting with the leaf anatomy and leaf morphology um, and the leaf types according to photosynthesis like C3, C4 and CAM type of um, photosynthesis and then ends with um, leaf senescence like colors changing in the leaves in some places and then abscission of the leaves. So make sure you cover these parts of thoroughly. Um, chapter 12 is the next chapter which is uh, basically systematics. Systematics is very important. We have more than 1.7 million species. Um, systematics basically uses um, uses taxonomy and phylogenetics approach to which is evolutionary relationship between uh, different groups of organisms to, um, to actually classify 1.7 plus million species. There are newer techniques that you use like cytochrome C could be used as a, um, in evolutionary studies. Um, there are some important points like uh, the whole uh, systematics uh, we know is actually started with Carl Linnaeus and in his two books that he published uh, basically Systema Naturae in 1735 and um, Species Plantarum in 1753. Um, now, then he's considered car, uh, the father of systematics. Now, this chapter also talks about taxons, which is basically anything, any part here you see in a typical cladogram, which is a taxon. Systematics, they can identify by cladograms like you see here, a modern type of phylogenetic tree. Okay, so in cladograms. So a cladogram has markers like you see here, these red markers like, they could be seeds, flowers, fruits, anything that actually use in this um, in this cladogram. Okay. Um, next chapter is algae, which is pretty large, big chapter actually. Uh, algae is a very wide uh, spread topic, which uh, divided in actually two uh, two groups: macro and micro. Macro is like the large algae, like green algae, brown algae, red algae, and micro like dinoflagellates, diatoms, euclenoids, which also we all most of them as uh, phytoplanktons that they provide more than 50% of maybe the oxygen to our atmosphere. So they are so, so important. Remember algae is a kingdom protista. So it's, uh, it's not planta, it's protista, but green algae specifically linked to the uh, plants, so that makes them very, very important for plant biology. And studying algae is phycology or algology, which is study of algae. 
in general. Okay, in uh, green algae, chlorophylla uh, is specifically important for us, as I mentioned. Um, there are many edible green algae, also, also some other algae uh, as a food. Algae also important as a food, additive, animal food, human food, pharmaceuticals, nutritional, biofuel, cosmetics, uh, proteins, and cancer therapies. So it's um, very commonly used. Um, there are conferences just about algae basically itself. Um, um, there, are, there is a one algae, a one uh, single cell algae called Chlamydomonas, which is unicellular green algae that makes it a good model system. It has two large flagellatus um, and contractile vacuoles, pyranoids, chloroplasts, so, and starch. Um, there is also another algae called Caras. They are the green algae, large big green algae. They just look like plants. There are algae, they look, they are, they live together, like um, in colonies, they're called wall walks. Uh, that's colonial. Okay, so and make sure also there is a group of algae, they are called heterotrophic protists, that they are actually uh, they cause diseases in plants. Plants are their hosts that makes them important. One particular one is um, Phytophthora infestans, which is potato late blight, which caused Irish famine um, in the beginning of century. A very, very important one. And Plasmopora viticola, a downy mildew disease in, uh, caused downy mildew disease in grapes. Our next chapter is Plantae uh, Kingdom, starting with this chapter, which is basically bryophytes. Bryophytes is chapter 16, most primitive plants. They are non-vascular, most primitive, small size, because there is no vascular tissue. They require water, no true root stem, leaf, just talus, talus and rhizoids. Needs water for reproduction. Um, reproduces using spores, right? So they use spores. Um, dominant dominant gen um, generation is gametophyte commonly found in more moist environments and um, also in rocks and soils and tree barks, again, moist environments. So bryophytes have three divisions, liverworts, hornworts, and uh, mosses. Mosses are most well-known one. The typical moss structure you see here, uh, gametophyte is the lower part, and sporophyte is the top part with the capsule and stalk and rhizoids like root-like structures at the bottom. Our liverworts are, uh, they are marchantia fida. They, they are leafy or uh, talus, and then um, they have capsules. Um, they have gametophyte, again, um, dominant. Hornworts, they have horn-like projectors uh, that, that's splitting and then releasing the spores. The mosses, most well-known uh, division or phylum here, which is leafy growth, um, again, have capsule opens up um, and releases the spores. Gametophyte have archegonia, anteridia, female, male, hydroids, and leptoids. There is no real um, xylem of phloem, but there is something called hydroids and leptoids, like look like water conducting and food conducting type of tissue. And they have one unique thing, which is a, they're asexual. They use gemma cells like gemmas. Um, in reproduction and sexual reproduction, they use sperms, but they must have water to carry them, and then um, they must they must have water available. So that's it for the review. Um, thank you for watching, and good luck with the with the test.